Hi, I'm Susan Kessel, and you're watching FPAC Channel 9. And today's show, we're visiting uh, the Ar Fairfield Art Association's exhibit by Joni McGinnis. Hi, Joni. Hi. Um, we have the exhibit here in the lobby of the First National Bank, and it opens today, right now, and it runs through March 20. First. 21st. Mm -hmm. um, you can come during banking hours and, and look at these. And she's done watercolors, which are really a fresh, um, I, I used to describe it a breath of spring. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but the title of your show is actually Nature's Beauty. Nature's Beauty. Tell me, how did you get started doing watercolors? Well, I always liked the way they looked, the colors and the the uh, real crispness of watercolors. So in high school, I began to paint. Uh, and we had uh, different classes where we just did watercolor. And I really was attracted to the re end result, although it, in the beginning I wasn't that good at it. I just continued to practice. <laughs> now, watercolor is considered one of the hardest media. Have you worked in any other media? Um, I tried acrylics, and I did some um, pottery and uh, did try oils. My mom painted in oils and when I was younger I, I did that a little bit but I didn't really like the um, opaqueness of the oil and the cleanup was very, it was very messy. <laughs> and smelly, I never yeah. worked with oils and the either. Turpentine and all. So I just like the watercolor because it's so easy, you know, as far as cleanup and, and uh, it dries quickly. And well I think you've got a natural instinct um, in working in watercolors, they're just fresh and vibrant. The mm -hmm. colors are beautiful. Thank you. Let's um, walk around and tell me. Let's start with this one because this one's my favorite. Oh, um, it's titled Easter Flowers. Mm -hmm. I just did this one actually a couple weeks ago, and I really felt like uh, using some spring colors, you know, because it's so drab out right now. So I made a very bright, springy looking painting. And I called it Easter flowers because it looks like Easter egg colors to me. It does. It, it has a really good feeling. I'm going to take my microphone off and I'm going to hold it. So, okay. Is that better? Um, the one below, mm -hmm. the Mono Lake, California. Mm -hmm. uh, that is just, it's a very simple one and I didn't put a lot of detail in it, but there's areas of California that are, are like that, but they it's, have... It's beautiful, and it's a little different than your others, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah, it is. I was kind of experimenting with... It, it actually only took me maybe five, ten minutes to paint, oh. <laughs> but now, it was fun. compare this one to mm -hmm. this still life, or not still life, landscape over here, and how different it is. Well, this one over here has a lot more detail in the rocks and the trees, and then the sky as well has several different colors and more movement. How about you, Cody? And did you do this one from a photograph or on location? Well, actually, I, I've been to, to Carmel quite a few yeah, times in my way, and that's where I got the inspiration for that. So. And the one above, the autumn leaves, titled Fall Blazes. Mm-hmm. Um, that one is supposed to look like leaves falling and just kind of give you the feeling of the energy and the, and the color that come at that time of year. It's a lot of movement with, with the leaves falling and the bright colors. And so I was trying to capture that. The sunflower up above is really pretty and um, really good subject matter right now. Yeah. Um, that one I was just, I've actually done several, probably four or five, or actually five total sunflower paintings with different, I've experimented with different ways of painting sunflowers. So that's one of them. That's why it says sunflower number four. This one over here, this one looks really kind of magical or something to me. Yeah, it's, uh, you're not sure which direction you want to look at it. They're coming from all different directions. and. I started out with the middle flower and then just started creating other flowers, like the background flowers were sort of thought, done after the fact. Um, I think that'd be beautiful in, your, in a home somewhere decorated just in the right colors. That's gorgeous. It's very bright. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's walk around over here. 
And florals are definitely your uh, forte. Yes, I love the florals and I find them to be s simpler only because you can't really make a mistake on a floral. Um, you can throw the paint on there and it sort of creates different shapes and you can find flowers in the midst of all that. <laughs> That's and th this one, um, it just kind of comes and goes and fades away and comes back. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. It lets you uh, think. It doesn't finish it for you. Yeah, I usually don't plan my florals too um, tightly, you know. I don't draw. Like these two, I did very little drawing. And as the paint sort of expanded on the wet paper and I began to see flower shapes and from there created the picture. Now and the one that we are focused on now you can see um, someone asked one time about using salt in watercolors and that's an example of putting salt on the watercolor and what it does. Right, right. It, um, the salt causes the pigment to ex uh, kind of leave that area and then you have the white paper underneath and it, it makes a really nice effect, almost like snowflakes or crystal or some kind of thing, but on flowers Real flowery. It gives, it gives it texture, yeah. <laughs> um, evening Glow, the one before, that's a real um, dramatic one. Yes, um, that one I sort of played up the pink sky and the purples to really make you feel like you were somewhere tropical, maybe Jamaica. Caribbean. Yes, and um, and so, although maybe the sky and the, the you know, water may not be quite that intense, I wanted to really give that feeling of being somewhere else. Great. We're going to shut the camera off just for a minute and be right back. We're back on the other side of our display and another gorgeous uh, floral watercolor. This one's titled Spring Bouquet. Mm -hmm. Again, this is one that I did no drawing in at all. I just began to put the colors on the paper and create flowers from what seemed to form as I, as I went. And a little bit of salt up in the left-hand corner there to create kind of a baby's breath feeling or light feeling. It really does. Mm -hmm. This would probably be a good time to tell that the Fairfield Art Association is going to have a watercolor class coming up um, this March by three different instructors, two, two different instructors, yes. mm -hmm. three nights apiece. Right. And uh, the first instructor will be Donna Guy. Mm -hmm. For three weeks, and then Pat Wilkinson for the last three weeks. And Pat is from Atumwa. Atumwa, and Donna Guy is from Brighton, and they're both really well-known watercolorists mm -hmm. and a good chance to uh, to start mm -hmm. um, if you're just a beginner or if you're more advanced to loosen up a little right, right, right. <laughs> and have a good time because right. they're lots of fun mm -hmm. and these classes are Tuesday nights from 6 to 9 starting on March 18th and that will be at the Carnegie Building the Adventure Room right right oh thank you <laughs> okay that's and the old library yes uh -huh. um, we'll come back down here to this one's Wyoming, and you definitely did this one in Wyoming or from a photograph? Um, this was from a photo, and uh, I don't even know if it was Wyoming. I'm not sure, but my husband was sure it was Wyoming because he used to live there, and it looked like it to it him. It looks like it to me, <laughs> so too. I, I said that's fine. And this one, you can tell uh, the title is a tribute to Grant Wood. Yes, and that one I was mainly working on my clouds and then once the picture developed, the painting developed, um, a lot of people told me it looked like a Grant Wood so that's why I named it that. Didn't start out with that intention though. <laughs> this one is to me a little different than your others too. It's it has a, a lot of sharp... animated, I would say. Not as much detail. And your colors, once again, even though they're darker, they're still very pure mm -hmm. and um, clean. Yeah, I don't do a lot of mixing. I like to use straight out of the tube, the paint. Which is a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, down below. This is um, one of my favorite uh, state parks in Indiana where I grew up. And those are limestone um, 
rocks that we used to uh, climb around in the woods. And Spring Mill State Park was one of my favorite places to vacation. We used to go quite frequently. And so I painted that actually from memory. <laughs> Didn't really have a photo, but we had been there so many times as a child that I it was easy. <laughs> had it ingrained in your memory. Um, Joni is a member of the Fairfield Art Association and is serving as a board member. So we're glad to have her as a board member and to have your show. Thank so you. thank you for that. Um, this painting, I thought I recognized or knew when you did it in a class I was taking, but um, it's one of those pictures that maybe looks familiar to everybody. Mm -hmm. It's a, a neat, neat picture. Um, my husband actually named this one. I thought it was a very clever name. He said it reminded him of something in Louisiana, or down south, the, and uh, it looked like a place if you were out in the hot sun, you'd want to go in and just take a respite. New Orleans. It yes, looks like New go. Orleans well, to me. Maybe so. I haven't been down there much, so I wasn't sure. You'll have to go. And then while we're looking at that, we are going, the Fairfield Art Association is going to have a wonderful class coming in October with an international artist, Rose Eden. Mm -hmm. Now both you and I have taken classes, mm -hmm. uh, a week-long workshop that runs every day from what, 8 a.m. till 5 at night. Mm -hmm. um, you go out on location and you paint and she is so inspiring. She's one, one of the most acclaimed watercolorists yes. featured in uh, watercolor magazines and, mm -hmm. and instruction books. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have her in Fairfield very lucky. Though. That's really an accomplishment. She gives classes, workshops all over the world. Um, she usually takes several international tours or uh, classes a year. So to get her in Fairfield, we're really lucky and we're really looking forward to that. Yes, yes. And if you're out there and have an interest, call me right away because the class will fill up as soon as I publicize it. <laughs> and we haven't publicized it yet. Yes. So we um, already have a lot of people that are interested. So Yes, most of the time people that have tended before will say, put me, sign me up um, a year, two years from now. Right. And they'll probably come from all over Iowa. So um, if you wanna if you're one of the local people you should sign up as soon as you can. And we did have to book her um, three years ago to right. get her here. So um, that's gonna be a great opportunity for watercolorists. Right. Let's move over and catch um, Washington Island, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a place my husband and I vacationed and we stayed in one of those little cabins there you'll see on the hill overlooking um, the Great Lakes area. And it was a very um, secluded area, very rustic, and I had a lot of time for painting and, and just sort of soaking in the atmosphere. This is a real mellow looking picture. I love the sky and where it meets the, the water. It's just um, really calming and soft. And I think we have just a few more pictures mm -hmm. around here. And um, we need to remind you that this exhibit is on at the First National Bank. Um, open to the public during banking hours and to come in anytime. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about this watercolor. This is a water lily and uh, usually when you do water lilies you'll do the, the the pond and sort of have the water lily as a secondary factor but in this case I focused very close up on the flower. You don't even see the lily pads or, or any of the water other than I gave the feeling of water in the background. The water, to me, is really important in this, though, because the way it cuts in and out of the flower, mm -hmm. and um, you've used some salt. I've used salt again to give some texture and to sort of give you that feeling of depth. And down below, the pink hibiscus. Mm -hmm. um, that one was done just recently, and again, just as an inspiring floral painting for, you know. I like... Um, the little bit of detail in the, fl the flowers, um, everything else is really soft and, and then you come in with that. It really um, strikes me. And then the very, very dark background. Mm -hmm. I like to do the darker backgrounds because they make the flowers pop out at you. 
so usually with a lighter flower I'll do a really dark background to give the contrast. Well thank you um, Joni McGinnis for sharing with us. Mm -hmm. um, we hope that you'll come up and see the exhibit and think about watercoloring and give one of us a call. Thanks yes. a lot. Thank you.